Hello, welcome to the Sunday Gardener. It's December and today we're going to look at making a Christmas wreath and here is the wreath that I'm going to demonstrate. It's entirely made up of stuff from the garden and it's fully compostable, there's no plastic in it and it's free, um, which given prices in the shops is always good. So you can use anything that you've got in the garden that you fancy. You might want to make a wreath that's got more greenery in it and less flowers, or you might want to make a wreath that's got some Christmas decorations in it as well and some ribbon. It's entirely up to you. But what we've got here is um, holly, euronymus, hydrangea flower heads, some ho holly berries, some seed heads, some dried seed heads, some viburnum, some uh, sedums, some agapanther flower heads, really um, hypercurium, English ivy, anything that you find in the garden that you want to put in it uh, will, will easily go into this wreath. And we're just going to look at the back of it because that, before we start, which really shows how it's put together. It's a wreath, so you have to start with a ring. And if you look, you can see here the red stems. And I used cornice stems, which are quite flexible, so I could bend them into the round. But you can use any flexible stems that you have in the garden. It really doesn't matter to make the ring. And the stages for making this wreath are really, you make the ring, first of all, um, I've used raffia tape, which is ideal. If you don't have any to hand, you could use string. It really doesn't matter as long as you can tie it in tightly. And I've actually made that at the, the top of the wreath. So the first stage is to make the ring and tie it in, in, in tightly and force it into a round shape. Then the second stage, the next stage, is adding the greenery, which is the kind of base of the wreath. And you can see it here, where it's all wound and woven into the back of the the back of the wreath. So I uh, added the greenery, then added the holly, then add the berries, the flowers, and anything else that you want to add. And in fact, this is a wreath that you can add to. So if you go for a walk and you see something that's nice that it's legal to pick, um, you can, you can add it in. Or if something starts to look a bit faded, you can take it out and replace it with something else from the garden. And making it around now, the first um, second week in December, it will last well into the new year and you can always refresh it by adding a few extra bits. Now we're going to look in some detail how to make this wreath for your Christmas decorations. Um, so we're going to start with making the, 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 the ring, which as I said is, is the more tricky bit of all of making it. And what you want to do is start with the longest stem you have to make the first beginnings of the circle. You'll also need some sort of twine or tape. This is raffia, which is quite strong enough. And this is used in making the wreath in two ways. One, at the, to bind the, the circle of the stems, the corner stems. And sometimes when you weave some of the um, foliage into the um, wreath, it won't always stay in position. And you might need to use a little bit of tie just to, to tie it in. So we'll start with the difficult, obviously difficult bit first. Now here are, here are all the corner stems. And I, 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 as they say, here's one I've made earlier. I, I've been busy bending these a bit, flexing them, uh, and getting them into a, a bit of a circular shape. And I've also got some which haven't been bent at all. For this, you really need three arms, but we haven't got three arms, so we manage as best we can. So if you s take the cornice or any flexible stem that you're going to use and start to bend it into a circle. Now it won't be, a per and it will do that, it will flip and sometimes if you're not careful it will catch you in the face. So that is actually the beginnings of it and it, it isn't a perfect circle and it won't be a perfect circle when you first start. It'll be more of a teardrop shape but we'll correct that later on and I'll show you how. So just start with one like that. Hold it really tightly. Take another one of the long corner stems. I'm going to have to pick them up off the floor in a minute, sift through them, find quite a long one. And again, uh, I'm not cheating. This is one that hasn't been bent. So we give it a bit of a flex, working to make it into a circle. 
and that's just to bend it round a bit and then what you do is as you can see that's the thin end of the last one so we'll start with the thick one and you start to weave it around the other stem like that and it probably might not go all the way to the end but that doesn't matter too much either because what you're going to do is you're going to bind this top end here with tape and that will a secure the corners or the stems and b it will force it into a more rounded shape so working with the various stems that you have we're going to keep weaving these into the circle so another one. each time going a different way it is awkward and this is as I've said the trickiest bit after this it's all significantly easier and they do pop out and you have to push them in and work around them to get a fairly tight circle so as you can see they're weaving in and, and this is where you're going to be pushing the various foliage in to make the wreath so there's about I've got about uh, one, two three there's about ten so I'm going to weave them all in uh, so that you've got plenty of uh, a sturdy ring and plenty of um, space to push the various foliage in so we'll take a look when we've when I finish doing that now before I weave any more in it's quite awkward holding them because they're, they're quite um, tensioned so what you might find helpful to do is at a halfway stage and I've got about four or five is to bind the top of the the stems so just tie them in and that will make it easier to weave in the rest of them and we'll take a look at the uh, the completed outside ring in just a moment so it looks a little bit rough at the edges at the moment but we'll soon sort that out now what we need to do is to bind the top properly and that will do two things it will hold everything in place and it will force it from this teardrop shape into a more rounded shape now you could leave it like this it's entirely personal choice but to get it tight and to hold it together securely we need to bind the top so we start in the middle and leave this end an end for tying and what we need to do is to force these round into the round and then with another piece see that that's from the we're going to force this down around it so don't worry about the amount of um, raffia that you have to use because it will all get hidden by the foliage that's going to come on top so I don't want to cut it off too short because I want to keep the tights for not so there you can see you've got much more of a rounded shape it's bound tightly at the top there to stop anything hopefully uh, pulling away and it's gone from the teardrop shape to the round shape and you're now in a position where you can start adding the various uh, types of foliage and um, berries and decorations that you want to put in it and the way to do this is use the the, the uh, multiple stems as uh, anchor points so I'm going to start it's always good to, 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 to work on it with the top and the bottom so I am going to treat where the uh, raffia is as the top and you may have to trim your pieces and alter the shape of them but I'm going to start by adding some greenery so it's, it's a matter of kind of looking around for a suitable anchor point so I found an anchor point there I'm going to just weave this in a bit and what you can do you might also find when you've when you've put a few in that you, you trim some off it's a, it's a work in progress but 
I'm going to add some of the green foliage and then I'm going to work in some of the, the, the lovely brightly coloured Euronymus. And again, what you're going to do is where you've got a gap in your corner stems, you can wedge it, wedge it in. And if, if you feel it's not secure enough, say like here, what you can do then is to just add a, a, little, a little tie or push it down further like that so that it's so that it's quite secure. So I'm going to add um, green foliage and some of the Euronymus as being the, 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 the base of the circle and then look at adding some berries and some seed heads and some decorations. So you want to put all the pliable stuff in first so that you can get the, the round shape and the very basis for the wreath. So I'm just looking to see what else there might be that's going to go in at this stage. So and sometimes you really just have to look for a suitable gap to poke it through, which means it ends up going and fitting in where the spaces are. We've still got some raffia showing there, so I'm going to take a look at what can add to cover up the raffia and add in some more of the uh, greenery. And now you can see that we really are starting to make progress and it's beginning to look much more like a festive wreath, mainly because I've added the ho holly berries which have really um, brightened, brightened the wreath up and we've got quite a lot of greenery in place. What you will find when, when you're working on it, and there's no right or wrong way to do this, what you're simply doing is taking your various decorations and poking them in through the woven cornice or whatever stems you're using and as you do that bits will come out of place and you'll have to poke them back in some bits may decline to go in the place how you want them and you may have to use a little bit of tape in the background to tie it in and if, when you look at the back you can see that there are one or two small ties where something won't lie around the wreath and you want to get the right shape everything is poked through the woven stem be careful when you put anything with berries into the wreath that you handle them carefully because the berries are quite fragile and they will, they will come off, which is always a bit of a shame because they really add a festive note to it. So uh, handle those with care. So what I'm going to do now is I've still got quite a few bits of greenery, so I'm going to see what else uh, will look good. If you have some ivy, um, that's quite useful for winding round it as well to help uh, secure things in there but this is a homemade wreath it's not going to look picture perfect it is going to have bits sticking out but hopefully the natural beauty of the plant says it all so you can see here in close-up and you can see how the different bits of foliage are woven into the corner stems and I'm going to add some hypercurium berries here so you just basically find a find a gap and twist it around to secure it and that's got quite a long stem on it, so it's sat in and then I want it sitting like that. Now at this stage, we've got most of the greenery in and what you'll find easier if you want to infill it further is to use smaller, shorter pieces because once it gets quite full, it becomes more difficult to get the large pieces in and to get them to kind of flow around the wreath. So if you want to add more, if you say, cut it into a smaller piece, you'll find that that's quite a bit easier. Just see if I can find a suitable spot. It's getting quite full now. You'll find that much easier just to poke through and it will sit like that and it won't need any bending in because it's just a small piece. It, it will sit quite easily without being further anchored. So I'm just going to add a few more bits of the, the green holly. I'm going to be mindful of where the top of the reef is now because of how it will look when it's when it's hung up. So I think I'll try and get them a bit balanced. Now, that's about these sedum heads. I'm going to reduce the size of them to make them easier and see where I can get them in. So sometimes by this stage when it's quite full it's just a question of 
adding stuff where you can physically get it to sit in and anchor it in. Now, I mean, I quite like these natural colours and dried seed heads and uh, brown of this, but some people may want, some, you know, you may feel you want something brighter, in which case more berries, Christmas decoration, uh, Christmas ribbon. It's really whatever you feel you want to add to it. I might just add those couple of hydrangea heads. So I could uh, carry on adding uh, a few more things, but I think we're not far off. Are we? We're pretty, pretty well there. And as I say, at this stage, you could easily hang some Christmas uh, decorations. You could hang some Christmas ribbon. Uh, this wreath, and I'm just going to show the picture again, looks completely different to the wreath last year. So it's very, so it's very much... Uh, whatever you have in your garden on the year that you're doing it. And so now the wreath is complete, although you could carry on adding to it as much as you want, it's personal taste. The really good thing about it is it uses only things from the garden, it's free, it's really good fun to make. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you have a chance to have a go at making this and have fun making it. Um, it's, uh, it takes about three quarters of an hour to an hour to make and uh, hopefully will look good on the front door for some time to come. So the only thing that's left to do now is to go and hang it up on the front door and to wish everyone a Merry Christmas.